We're at the quarterfinal stage of the World Cup with eight teams left, all of them starting to dream that maybe they'll be the team lifting the trophy at the very end at the Lucille Stadium. Two of them, the Netherlands and Argentina, certainly have aspirations, but only one will move on to the next round because they play in a quarterfinal Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern at the very stadium where the final will be decided. This one's a rematch of that 2014 semifinal that Argentina won. The Netherlands will do everything they can not only to make life harder this time around, but to have a different result. And they have optimism to do so because it was a good round of 16 victory against the United States, a 3-1 win that the Dutch got on the back of a masterful game plan from manager Luis van Gaal. It relied on the back three that's been good not only just at this World Cup, but in the Nations League before it and a couple other competitions where the Dutch have been really rolling on the international level with this formation. The formation also allows the wing backs to get forward, to be key players in the attack. And that's exactly what Denzel Dumfries was. He was the danger man in that game. Two assists in the first half, including one to his fellow wingback, Daley Blind, and a goal of his own to finish things off in the second. So wide areas will absolutely be the key for Argentina to shut down. Marco Sacuna and Nahuel Molina started as fullbacks in Argentina's 2-1 victory over Australia. But I wouldn't be surprised to see things get mixed up. Both Nicolas Tagalifo and Gonzalo Montiel came into that game against Australia to close things out. Maybe they'll be the players in a more defensive posture for Argentina. Dibu Martinez, the goalkeeper, also needs to have a good game because Argentina has relied on him to make good saves and they really haven't had a keeper as good and as in form as he is in their previous attempts to win the World Cup with Lionel Messi. And speaking of Messi, there's no doubt that the Dutch need to focus on him, stopping him not only from scoring, but from creating goals for other teammates. Frankie de Jong, the Dutch midfielder, joked this week that he doesn't know how he's going to do it. He doesn't know how to stop Messi, and, and who does? Angel Di Maria is still trying to work back from his injury, but he is back in training. I'd be surprised to see him start, but the fact that he could come in is a boost for an Argentina team that likes his experience, and especially for one that needs players to combine with Messi like Di Maria has done for so many years. But you're starting to see other players in this rising generation of Argentina that can com combine with Messi as well. Julian Alvarez, for instance, is starting to click with Messi, scored in that game against Australia. Plus, Lautaro, if you play him off the bench or start him, another player who seems to understand what the best player in the world wants from him. The options are there for Argentina in attack. They have that attacking punch no matter what they do. The Dutch, I'm not sure that's the case for. Sure, there are weapons. Memphis Depay is starting to find form. Dumfries so good in that game. But at the same time, I just don't think their attacking punch is as strong as what Argentina can offer. And that's why I think Argentina, for me, is a team that I like even more than the bookmakers do. They're at minus 154 to go through. And I saw them at plus 120 to win in the 90 minutes. I love those picks. I think Argentina is going to do it in regulation time. And I think they're going to be goals... Plus 140 for over 2.5 is one that I'm on as well. I think Lionel Messi's last dance continues for at least a few more songs, and Argentina moves on. We've got previews of every single quarterfinal on the Covers YouTube channel and all sorts of other good information on Covers. Stick with us. We got you covered the rest of the tournament. Talk to you then.